Welcome back folks. In this video, I want to share with you some techniques that you can use when you're dealing with really curvy objects. And we're going to use the pen tool in Photoshop to help us with digitally inking this character. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I've got here is I've got my uh, pencils on a, on a separate layer. I've made a new layer underneath the pencils. And what I'll do now is I'll use the pen tool I'll just scoot this over here so you can see it. The keyboard shortcut is P for pen. And this tool gets a lot of flack from some folks. They just get scared of it. It seems like it's really intimidating, but the truth of the matter is it's not. It's actually it takes a little bit of practice. And once you have that practice down, it's actually a pretty powerful tool to have in your arsenal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by just clicking on one point. And as I click on another point and drag, I can affect the shape of the curve. And I'm going to do that for this top part, just making these little vertices, clicking and dragging. And if I've got a sharp corner, instead of just clicking all the way at the bottom here, I want to make another little vertice right next to where the previous one was. This ensures that I can make a sharp corner. And the same thing over here, there's a sharp corner, so I'll click and drag. Click. Specifically designed this monster so that I could get more practice with a pencil. And, you know, as you're going through like areas that are very linear, you can extend that out a little bit. And just so um, you can see what I'm doing here. Oh, see, I have to click it really close to preserve the sharp points. Important thing is not to rush. And I say that as I'm recording a YouTube video. You can always hit undo, command Z while you're making your selections. Okay, there we go. So I've got my entire selection set up. Next, what I'll do is I'll actually take that path. What I've done is I've created a path. I'm going to convert it into a selection by um, clicking on that menu item here and just choosing make selection. You can see the selection is now active. I will now pick my black color. I'll fill it in, alt backspace. And let's just toggle off the pencils layer for a moment to see what we're left with. This is basically the silhouette of this character. And what I have here is just really sharp points. They're not perfect. I can always come back in with my brush and I can clean up these edges that are not super ideal. I can go in with my lasso tool to refine the curves even more if I wish. But what I want to do is I want to convert this from a shape to something that has some line width variation. So what I'll do next is I'll hold down the command or control key on a Windows machine, command on Mac, to select the entire object. Next, what I'll do is I'll go to select, modify, contract, and I'll just choose contract by, I don't know, let's just be generous and choose 25 pixels. We'll hit OK. And you can see that that selection now is evenly placed within the selection that I have. Now. If I were to just go back to my move tool, my move tool defaults to cut in. So like if I were to click and drag now, it's going to cut that shape out, which is not what I want. Instead, what I want to do is I just want to move the selection over so I can uh, have some thick and some thin lines. To do that, I'm going to hold down the option key. When you hold down the option key, you're given this black and white uh, triangle and you can just now move your selection wherever you wish. So I can, maybe I'll move it down in such a way that I have a little bit more of a thicker line on the top. Let's see what that looks like. Now I can hit Command X. Oh, Command X, I don't know why it didn't work before. But this gives me a better thin to thick line quality. It's not perfect. 
Honestly, the best way to do this would just be to go ahead and try to ink it. But if you're new and you're trying to um, improve your line weight, this is a good cheat for it until you get more practice and you get better. So from this point, what I can do now is I can move that ink layer up above. I can drop the opacity of my pencils layer and then I can finish this out with my inks. And I'll just go ahead and do that since it's been a while since I've actually created something from start to finish just so you can see more examples. So these smaller lines are really easy to hit. Optionally, you could do the same thing for the teeth, but um, you know the only downside to using that pen tool selection is that the line width is gonna look a little bit more artificial. It's never going to look exactly like um, someone hand inked it. So don't fool yourself into thinking that that's the case. This is just a way for folks that are struggling with getting their line weight to work. This is just another tool bag in your arsenal that you can use. Um, so, you know, use it for what it's worth. Uh, this thing looks pretty flat. And so what I want to do now is I want to introduce some scale and some texture to this, I guess, creature. Remember, the closer you place lines together, the darker it's going to look. The further apart you place lines, the lighter it's going to look. And this automatically gives a little bit of a sense of what this character is comprised of. Uh, and then from here, what I can do is I'll just make some, I don't know if I like that. I'll have to do something with that spike, but this is me thinking off the cuff, guys. Uh, so he's got this weird spike here. You know what I might do? I might, this is an executive decision here. I'll just go ahead and make that a little bit curved. I'm not sure if that's necessarily any better, but it just fixes a little bit of a problem that would have been there. And then for this, um, let's let's go ahead and now see if we can utilize our black fill. So we'll use our lasso tool, and I'll make a selection that goes something like this. Option delete. Option delete. And then if I wanted to have some kind of a weird scaly pattern, holding down the shift key will allow you to add to your selections like I'm doing right here. I can hit Command X. Command X. And I've got this. And then we'll introduce some of those scales here at the bottom, just so it doesn't look so flat. And that's the thing. I mean, we're using this uh, texture stuff to go ahead and diminish the, the line weight artificiality. Um, but it's a cheat and it's something that, you know, from time to time, if I'm working on something, I, I, I use it on rare occasion. The real way to do this would just be to use your entire arm and practice moving your arm as you draw. Uh, drawing with your arm as opposed to your wrist is a game changer for me. Um, it really changed the quality of my lines in a way that was noticeable. Uh, and I like to just share that with anyone that I meet that is trying to get better at drawing. So now I've got this weird, creepy monster Let's go ahead and uh, finish this out with some color. We'll just use the magic wand tool. We'll select anywhere outside of our creature. Let's make sure that we don't have any gaps. We probably do. If you've watched this, these videos long enough, you know that there are always gonna be gaps in my inks. That's just me. Can't help it. So I'll try to close as many of the gaps as I can. I'll use the magic wand tool once more. Make sure that you have anti-alias, contiguous, and sample all layers checked. Uh, select outside. 
hit shift command I or shift control I on a PC that inverses the selection. Make a new layer, fill it in with a color of your choice, like so. And then you can easily shift select to add your colors here, command J, command U. I've talked about this technique before where you work from your base color layer, duplicate, and you can dial in whatever colors you wish. It's pretty good. Saves me a ton of time. If you want to get white, you just drag it all the way to the right. And then for these little sections right here, you know, just being really smart, I could use the magic wand tool and select these individual parts, but I don't need to. I'm just going to make a sloppy selection around both of these horns. Hit Command J, Command U, and make those darker. So. Selection tools can be really, really awesome and they can be super helpful. Uh, don't uh, diminish them as you digitally ink. So I hope you found this video to be useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would greatly appreciate the subscription. That way you get notified whenever the next video comes out. Let me know what you want to see. Drop some comments below so I can get an idea of what you're looking to learn next. As always, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.